my yeah. So, yeah. All right. Hey, Fish, are you ready for the Brothers Super Bowl? They should call it that because the Kelsey brothers, they're playing on opposite teams. First time that's happened. And it's the first time the quarterback matchup is going to be two African-American quarterbacks. That's kind of the initial historic stuff. What, what, what What's your initial take from what the Super Bowl is going to be? I, I hate that bullshit. I hate the historic stuff. I mean, look, 75% of the NFL is African-American. And I hate when people bring that up because it, uh, I don't I don't know if the African Americans like when you bring that. I know Doug Williams was pissed off when people asked him, "You're the first black quarterback to be yeah. in a Super Bowl back in '87." I I know it's historical, but you know what? I would love the narrative to be, "Hey, just this, it's a Super Bowl, and the best two teams are playing two number one seeds, right?" Uh, yeah, the Kelsey brothers. You brought that up, but unfortunately, I wish there was a brothers team that went up against each other, but they both play offense. Um, nothing yesterday really stood out to me other than we'll get into it. Some bad officiating, but it, it pretty much went down as I thought 49er fans are crying, but guess yeah. what? Go, go get a GoFundMe page for Hassan Reddick who knocked two quarterbacks out in one game. Yeah. 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 I, I got to tell you, I think one of the things that made me realize was that, uh, that buy you get at the beginning of the playoffs was really both helpful, uh, to both teams, uh, because, yeah even though they had some injuries, uh, both teams actually were, you could tell they were the better teams, even though I, I thought the Bengals were going to, were going to do something there when they, when they didn't have the enough linemen that were experienced there, you see Joe Burrow was, he was, he was getting knocked around like he did in last year's Super Bowl. So well, that was, I thought that was a big thing there. Yeah. Right. He got sacked seven or eight times. Chris Jones is a one man wrecking crew, wrecked the Raiders in the last game of the season, wrecked yeah. Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville the week before and was just uh, atrocious on uh, on that Bengals offensive line. The game changed, I thought, because there's some officiating gaffes there. But when Burrow had a third and 18 and hit Hayden Hurst for a 20-yard gain, I said, oh, my God, they're going to pull this off. Yep. When he threw that interception and then poor Chris Osai, the linebacker that hit Mahomes out of bounds, one of the best players they have, yep. that you can't win a Super Bowl when you're throwing picks in the fourth quarter and you're making plays like that. And – Kansas City's a better team. The two number one seeds. John, are you are you uh, are you aware that the Philadelphia Eagles set a record this year? They had the most rushing touchdowns in the history of the league in one season, including the regular season and playoffs. So, both deservedly so. It's going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one too. And whoever controls that line of scrimmage is probably going to is probably going to win that game. Hey, folks, welcome to Daily Fish, coming to you from Vegas and Myrtle Beach. I'm John Daly. He is Eric Fish Snyder, and we have the hard line with John Hardison from the Cost of Winning podcast and all of his sports betting advice. Unfortunately, Hardline cannot be with us today. He had some other commitments, but he said to say hello, and he gave us also his comments and advice on different things. So, folks, if you got questions or comments, drop them in the chat box, or if you're not watching us live, email us at dailyfish1, the number one, dailyfish1 at gmail.com. All right, Fish, you touched on this uh, about the officiating. I got to admit, I, I thought the officiating in both games yesterday w was lacking a bit. Still, I I, I think the, the call made on Osai that led to the uh, field goal, I thought that was a good call. Uh, I know a lot of people were, were upset about that. Um, I thought a little bit of the, the 49ers Eagles game. I thought there was some, there was a couple of ticky tack calls against the 49ers that I thought, eh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but um, usually it's, it's people that are rooting for their team that are pissed off at that. W what are you seeing? And, and w w why do you think officiating has, cause it's, it's really come under scrutiny, especially in the NFL and other leagues as well. Why, why do you think, it's considered so bad now. Well, I agree with everything you just said. And because you always bring up the great, your, your great line ever is hero of their own stories. And these guys have to be the heroes of their own stories. Officiating, they want to take over. Um, but there were some dumb calls. But the, the San Francisco, Fred Warner on a, on a critical third and six, a, a blatant face, a face mask on Boston Scott. There was hits out of bounds. They, yep. Both teams that lost deserved to lose. The officials, there was gaffes, like I said earlier. Let me show you a couple of memes that I thought were interesting. This is a big church in Kansas City. I just got this. The Church of Christ, right? There. God we know, an ankle isn't a top priority, but I love that. <laughs> and then look at this. This is going to piss you off, John. This is the Empire State Building. They're, the Empire, uh, they, they, green and they, wow. put on their, they put on their Twitter account, John, and said, in honor of the Eagles. Could you imagine the Patriots doing that? 
going in honor of the Jets. I, I was, oh my God, Dave Panati, <laughs> Christine Furco, Ralph Facchiano, all the people that work for Giants Insider goes, Fish, get that on your podcast because we won't because we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're going crazy right now. Interesting, interesting. how I, I, interesting. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the guy that runs the Empire State Building, uh, their marketing, is, is dating someone that's involved with the Eagles. Crazy, yeah. isn't it? Well, and you're going to have a lot of people who will tell us, you know, there's a lot of New York fans who are in New Jersey, and there's a lot of fans in Jersey that are are Philly fans because sure. they're closer to them. So I, I guess if you kind of consider, consider New York City kind of a part of New Jersey as well, they may have done that. But I agree with you. I, I think I, that's that's a little strange in, in New York City. <laughs> to have that, these yeah, things. well, back, back to officiating. I just want to get off that because I don't, I, we have such a good fluid show. And people are saying the chemistry between you and me is so good. Bullshit. That's because we're on <laughs> chemicals. Yeah, the chemicals, yeah. <laughs> um, back to the officiating. I think what ruined it for a lot of people, ruined it for me with the NBA, was a Tim Donahue fiasco that happened years ago that Netflix yep. did a wonderful documentary on that, that they fix games to get teams in it. So what you think that, it's in the back of your head. And it's so tough. The problem with the NFL that, that makes it even worse is they have – New York to go to. They have so many camera angles to go to, and they they somehow still can't seem to get it right. I'm with you, though, and we'll move on from this. Oh, I'll get your opinion on this. I don't mind the calls, but I get pissed off at the ticky-tack calls. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, and at the same time, too, I, I'm not crazy about, oh, you got to film everything and you got to. But I think I think the technology is going to allow them to do more filming and checking. So, for instance, that first touchdown, uh, that that the um, Eagles got the the Devontae Smith catch was a great catch, but we didn't see afterwards until he clearly dropped that ball. And and the fact and and the fact that you know the 49ers didn't throw the flag on that. That's on them. That's on that them. That is on I them. I, I that agree with uh, Greg Olson. By the way, he's terrific. He, is that, that he great? That, that crew is terrific. Yes. I'm just Brady better not retire because I don't want that guy to leave the booth. He's so much better than Tony Romo was. Oh. Here, here's what's interesting, though, is that if Brady does retire, he's got a contract with Fox Sports, and that would push him out. And I don't, th I think I agree with you. A, a lot of people are talking about how good he is and how good that crew is. And I'm drawing a blank. Uh, what's uh, what's the uh, play by play? Kevin guy? Burkhardt is the guy that Kevin does the Burkhardt. play by play. Phenomenal. Yeah. And here's what's interesting he actually covered the Eagles, and uh, he's going to be doing the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, Super Bowl for Fox, so that's really interesting. I agree with you. I thought they did a great job on that. Okay, absolutely. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, All Star Games. Uh, while we're, you and I are prepping for the Super Bowl, we're going to have to endure the so called NFL Pro Bowl game, Pro Bowl weekend in Vegas. I, I, I'm not going to be paying attention to that. What about you? No, well, I talked about it last week on the show. That it's 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 throwing a football from 50 yards into a trash can. It's you know obstacle courses and a flag football game. And it's 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 pretty much not just an embarrassment. It, it actually, you know, it's it's for my intelligence right now, and it's not big. My intelligence, <laughs> it's insulting. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go through all, all the All Star games. Stink. Uh, the NBA is 180 to 185, a uh, 185 180. The NHL game last year was 15 to 12. You don't see it. And again, people, you know, people, more, the most watched baseball event last year was the Home Run Derby. Yeah, more than any game. I love the home run derby, the All Star game. The All Star game for me in baseball, I'll let you go, meant something for me when we were younger. When it was the only time that the American League would see the National League, unless it was a World Series. Now you started interleague play years ago. Yeah. Who cares? You know. Yeah, I I, I, I agree. I, and again, one of the reasons I don't watch them is because I think there's there's other stuff to do. Like during during the so called Pro Bowl, I'm going to be watching the AT and T at Pebble Beach. During the All Star game, I'm going to. You know, NBA All Star Game. I'm going to be watching college basketball now. In defense of the leagues, um, you know, if you're trying to get other people, like young kids or other people who don't normally watch it, and kind of get the celebrity aspect, okay, that's good. But don't expect you and me or really true fans to be watching that. So anyway, all right, uh, folks. You know, we love to eat and drink here on Daily Fish. So we asked, what are the best tailgating cities now hardline again hardline's not here with us he gave us three really good ones that i agree with buffalo kansas city and philly and kansas city and those are the three that could have been all in the super bowl uh and uh, buffalo was always rated the, the best tailgating 
Uh, Kansas City, can you imagine that with the ribs? And then Philly, oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Hard to disagree oh. with that. Fish, give me yours. Well, the ones I've been to. Chicago is phenomenal. Bill Soldier Field. I mean, one thing about tailgating that adds to the whole experience of going to an NFL game is the smells of the parking lot. You smell peppers and onions and sausages and hot dogs and, and great pastas, and people make an event out of it. They sit there for three days, and they bring these stoves. And you can walk, you know, when you're in Oakland, I don't care who you are. You walk by someone's tent, and they could be cholos and gangbangers and invite you to eat something, and you do. It, and it brings people together. It's, well, tailgating is it's so great because you're there. It's your team, and you're there, and you're enjoying the experience. Oakland's great. Chicago's great. Here's a problem I have. And you'll agree with me. All the new stadiums here at Allegiant, right? The yeah. San Francisco. We just saw the the you know we, we the last week we watched the uh, the game in Santa Clara. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, Atlanta, Minnesota. All these new stadiums are purposely not having parking lots. They want you to go public transportation. They don't want tailgating, and I think that takes away from a, a part of the experience. What do you think? I agree with you 100. percent I've got four, yeah. and I'm going to say Chicago also. But I'm talking about Chicago at Cubs games. Chicago Cubs games are really, really good tailgating. Baltimore outside Orioles games, those are really good. I've really enjoyed them. Here's here's one of the better ones, and, and college football has a ton of them. NC State has, has a great one. I've been to that. Uh, Clemson has a really, really good one. You can imagine all the great Southern food there. Here's, here's one of the – that's a kind of surprise for everybody. Jacksonville. Jacksonville for a Jags game. I actually was at that. And there was a ton of military guys who were military cooks. And I mean, they were cooking for, I mean, vast amounts of people. That was really good. But I, I got to tell you, Fish, and this is, this is my bucket list tailgate. In Jacksonville, I want to go and I want you to go with me. And we're going to do a show live there. It's the biggest outdoor cocktail party. It's in Jacksonville. It's when Florida plays Georgia in college football. And folks, if anyone is listening or you're watching us here, let us know if you've got tickets there and you want us to come down, we'll do our show from there. What do you think about that, Fish? I think it's great, but I'll, I'm going to do a slam on one. You brought college into it. When I went to the University of Texas, our big rival was Texas A&M down in Kyle, Texas. Not only was the tailgating great, but you had guys that were there that were auctioning off their wives and their sisters. It was so great. <laughs> and it, it was you, you had shotgun weddings. You had, you had brothels. I mean, that's that part of Texas. That made the experience even better. So. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right, Fish, um, we have – just think if we go to any – there'd be some great memes that you would have of us at that event. Of course, we might even make it to the game. All right, speaking of memes, it's time now for Fish's Memes of the Week. What has hooked you this week, Fish? Well, I, I want to do a celebration for the two cities that are in the Super Bowl, which is Philadelphia and Kansas City. It reminds me of the old movie – um, God damn it, it came out in 1983. The Outsiders. Remember S.C. Hinton's book that we all had to read in middle school about yep. the greasers and the socias? Yeah. Well, this is the rednecks versus the mechanics. Blue collar against you know, <laughs> every barbecue-eating, toothless person that comes from Kansas City. And I say that. Here's a prop. Because I represent heart. the Raider Nation. Okay? And we're Absolutely. pissed off that the Kansas City Chiefs are so good. They're going through a run right now, John. That we went through with Kenny Staver, and, and God bless him, Mahomes is a genius. So let's look at some of the famous people that are from Kansas City. From uh, Let's go through Philadelphia first. Okay. Oh, hang on a second. I messed up. Kevin Hart. Yep. Okay. Bradley Cooper. Will Smith. These are all famous people that are born and raised in Kansas City. Grace Kelly. Oh, look at that. And, wow. and then they're going to go to the GOAT, Kobe Bryant. Okay, yeah. these are all people, celebrities, athletes that are from the great, great town of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right. Here's some of the people that are really from Pennsylvania and from Philadelphia that are big fans of Daily Fish. Look at this guy. That's a guy that tailgates there. <laughs> right. This is the old days when John and I were young. Look at that. That's when you had the oh, problem yeah. in the stadium. That's that's the hussy right there. <laughs> this is a this is a shotgun wedding in in, in the old wink. All right, actually no. the uh, the vet stadium. All right, and it. then this is actually. The Philadelphia's number one cheerleader. Okay. So that's Very Philadelphia. Nice. Let's go to let's She's go to Kansas cool. City. Okay. Kansas City has Melissa Etheridge, great uh -huh. country singer, great person. How about yeah. Harry S. Truven? Talked about him yep. last week. Yeah. All right. Kansas City, born and bred. Look at these three, John. Rob Riggle, Paul Rudd, and Jason Sudeikis, all superstars in the business, all no from KC. Thing. 
Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. And then you got Don Cheadle. Yep. Love that actor. He was so great in Boogie Nights. He loved John Tiff. Then let's go, to, let's go to the downside of Kansas City. This is the real Kansas City people, right? This is the number one attire in Kansas City. That's a John Deere tractor hat. <laughs> <laughs> I right. love the nose tattoo. Yeah. Right. This is the uh, the mayor of Kansas City. <laughs> wow. Nice. Just kind of like the mayor of Cincinnati, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, God. What an idiot. Rajol. You know? And then, <laughs> look at this. You know? Rose are red. <laughs> Her yolos are pink. Show me yours and I'll buy you a drink. And then he got married. Look at that wedding. That's Kansas City <laughs> wedding right there, buddy. Wow. That's your memes, kid. I love the tire. Okay, there we are. Those are Fish's memes. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for joining us here on Daily Fish. We talk sports, entertainment, and politics and everything in between. Just like you do. No woke, no extreme, no social justice cops here. You have a problem with us? Eh, don't worry about it. Send us comments and questions. Send it to Daily Fish, the number one, at gmail.com. John, real quick, I, I have to go. I know it's not part of the, the, this little schasm in the show. Um, I want you to talk about two people. I'll talk about it real quick. We just lost Billy Packer. And I know yeah. you're the biggest college basketball fan. He did 37 Final Fours. Bobby Hull just died, one of the greatest hockey players of all time. We don't oh, give wow. a lot of, uh, of lip service to college basketball and hockey. We will do more when football's over. But yep. talk about, on the top of your head, what Billy Packer meant to you. Because to me, he's the face of college basketball as far as an analyst. He certainly was, certainly in the 70s and uh, 80s oh. and, and part part of the 90s. Uh, yeah, he was a very calming effect. He was a, uh, he was a, uh, I think he was a newspaper reporter first, and then he ended up uh, working with Jim Nance. And, um, you know, it was, it, it was when it was just about college basketball. Again, he wasn't, he wasn't out there by any means, but he certainly knew the sport, uh, had a very, uh, controlled and interesting way of describing it. And he, he also had a lot of, you know, behind the scenes with the coaches that uh, he could fill in. But uh, from what I heard, and I, I met him one time, nice man, um, very nice guy, uh, very sad to see that he has passed away. And uh, he's really only been out of the booth, I think maybe about, about four or five years or so, I think, because maybe it's 80, been longer. 82 years. The slap shot in hockey is called the Bobby Hull slap shot. No one had a quicker slap shot and Wayne Gretzky, even Alexander Ovechkin, got, uh, nowadays, but the way, great one, Wayne Gretzky, they all test their game and their skills to Bobby Hall. And he, his son, Brett Hall, had a great career in the NHL. So, you know, we like to give a rest in peace and, and, and a prayer to the, to the families, but we're losing them. And these are great. Yep. Go on YouTube. YouTube's our biggest outlet, video-wise. Go on YouTube and just type in some of Billy Packer's great calls and look at Bobby Hall play hockey in the 60s and 70s and you'll you'll see what John and I grew up with. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Rest in peace to them. That's for sure. Okay. All right. Now it's time for our schmuck swag and drink. All right, fish. Who's been schmucky this week? Let me get the schmuck. I, I, I always got to get the icon, but oh, the I'm sorry. Did I, go your icon. I, I hate to do this because he's a kid, <laughs> and I always said to you, I love this kid. I love his name. Okay. Who's that? Could that be fish? A younger well, fish at the hair. Could have been you. That it could be Bernie been you. Kozar. Yeah. I love this kid's name. That is Stetson Bennett. All right. Uh, he just yep. got arrested for getting a DUI. All right. Yeah. I don't mind that because it happens. I'm a bartender. We we avoid that at all costs. Any good bartender's job to get you home. Why well, he's a schmuck? He got drunk and started knocking on every house in the neighborhood, knocking on the doors. And you know, when you hear a knock on the door at two or three in the morning, don't answer it. Could be Stetson Bennett. I will yeah. say this. But get a second chance. He does have the greatest name of any quarterback. That is a con. Well, I would say if he didn't have a career in football, he could be a congressman or a senator. But this little stain on his biography. But come on, man, you're drunk. Just if you're gonna get drunk, stay in your house. Don't don't knock on people's doors. Schmuck. Well, what was worse was that he he was at an NFL. It was it was like an NFL meeting or gathering of of the prospects yeah. for the NFL draft. So it was kind of like. Ugh. Yeah, I hope he didn't hurt himself, but uh, hopefully he didn't, he didn't hurt anybody. He didn't hurt All right, him. no. All right, so who are we celebrating this week? Fish, who's got the swag? This is Terry Daly, John's beautiful wife. If, if Terry Daly wasn't in John's life, John wouldn't be the kind of person he is. She's just, everyone out, he definitely <laughs> outkicked his coverage. This is her favorite athlete who is named today the most charitable and does the most um, philanthropy of anyone in the history of the NFL. This is Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Patrick Mahomes 
He might not win NFL Man of the Year. He has. But I saw that a little bit last night. If you caught watching the game, Romo was talking about it. He gives more of his time and more of his money to charitable events. And this is the number one player in your league. And that sets an example for young kids. And I, I think it's we, that's when you get swag with me is when you're the top of your game. LeBron does it, top yep. of his game. It's the athletes that don't do it, don't deserve it. But that this guy is unreal. I agree with you. And he does give back an awful lot. And um, so – I think we need to toast him. We're going to toast him with our drink of the week. What are we sipping here, Fish? This is a Heineken Zero. It's a, um, oh, it's a, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a Heineken Zero. It's a non-alcoholic beer in lieu of. I'm trying to Stetson see Bennett. Stetson Bennett so we can get a political career going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If you're going to day drink, day drink, but have a have a beer that's at least non-alcoholic. It tastes the same. Absolutely. There you go. Mm. I could drink those all throughout the whole show, and you wouldn't even know I was drinking. All right. So our Daily Fish Drink of the Week is sponsored by Shuck's Tavern in Vegas. Great seafood and drinks in two locations. Head to Shuck's Tavern on North Durango on the northwest side of town where fish is overnight. Say, Daily Fish Podcast. You get a free drink. Do it the next day. Guess what? You get a free appetizer. That's Shuck's Tavern. Check out Shuck's Tavern on Facebook. Again, this is Daily Fish. We are on Facebook at daily.fish.5. You can subscribe there. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, iHeart, Stitcher, and Amazon. Watch us on Facebook at Myrtle Beach Golf Channel and Myrtle Beach Grand Strand Life. Check out Daily Fish on YouTube and Wingding TV and check out our posts and news updates on Twitter. All right, now let's get some bets from the Daily Fish hard lines. He is John Hardison. He has the cost of winning podcast focusing on fantasy sports and sports betting. He's on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. Again, Hardline cannot be with us tonight. He has some prior he has some prior commitments, but he did give us some of his early bets for the Super Bowl, and he's telling me uh, on texting, he said the Philly is a one-and-a-half point favorite today, but he said that line could change. Um, here's, here's some of his interesting prop bets. Um, any player with a 60 plus yard reception, and that's at a plus 310. Uh, opening kickoff will be a touchback. That's a that's a, a money line bet at minus 142. This is a really good one. Miles Sanders and Travis Kel Kelsey both score the first touchdown for their team. That's a plus 1700. Now, I fish. And comment on any of those that you think you might jump on. And then I know you've been working on kind of behind hard lines back to come up with your own Super Bowl prop bets, right? Well, you text hard line about the prop bets. I'm texting him because he, he told everyone in the world, he always texts us to take San Francisco, right? So he's avoiding his book. He's on, he's on, hey, Joey, Benny, he's on Route 40 right now, okay? He owes me <laughs> money too, so go grab him. My prop bets go like this. Um, Art Donovan, one of the great, great sound bites in the history of NFL played for the Colts, said whenever he played in the big game, he used to eat sausage sandwiches of peppers and onions and Worcestershire sauce and horseradish. So his breath was so bad. Tony Siragusa didn't shower. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. And he does and his breath stunk. I'm saying over or under 25 players do the same. Okay. They're gonna nope. put stuff, they're gonna put stuff in their crotches. The worst smelling thing, I think over under 25 is one of them. The second one is, do you think over under, do you think Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey will do a long embrace before the game or not? Okay. That's, a, that's an easy one. The other one, the big, the big, big, big prop bet is how many people from Kansas city will show up in Arizona and have a full set of teeth? I say over <laughs> under 23. <laughs> And in Philly, in Philly, how many fans show up in Arizona over under 50 and don't have a really long <laughs> felony record? Okay, that's my prop bets. Get, get, get us at dailyfish at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. Let us know what you think. That's cool. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if in Arizona if they're going to build a jail for all the Philly fans that are going to come down there. Good point. Yeah. You know, have you, have you been there, John? Glendale is a really nice area. It's about 30 minutes yeah. out of Phoenix. And yeah. it's um uh it, it's a nice community. They have a high area for restaurants, but 
It's far out of Phoenix. I don't know if they built it up. I was there years ago for a Seahawks game against the Cardinals. Um, so it's interesting. It's not really in Phoenix proper. Like the Super Bowl next February is in Las Vegas. And oh God, yeah. it's going to be great. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you, let me ask you this. And, uh, you know, it could, could tie into uh, some prop bets there. Um, my guess is, is that um, n- 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 let me ask you this way next week. I, I, I don't know how many people you think are coming for the, for the, for the pro bowl thing. Do you think there's going to be a lot of people there? Cause it's going to lead to another question for you. I don't know. It's a great question because there was 500,000 people maybe 600,000 came in for the NFL draft that we had last May here in Las Vegas. And a lot of them weren't Raider fans because we didn't have a first or second round draft pick. So it's Vegas yeah. and, there, and there's events around it for people. So and there's discounts. Yes. I think people are coming for the Pro Bowl. So let me, let me ask you this. Then the next question I'm going to ask is since the games in Glendale and when the Super Bowl was always in Glendale, you know, and, and you know, that was, it's probably, this has probably been like the third or fourth time. And I can remember when when I lived there, the amount of people who went to the Super Bowl, but what they did is they flew into Vegas, they stayed on the strip, and then on Sunday morning, they flew down, went to the game. On Sunday night, they flew back and enjoyed Vegas. Do you think there's going to be more people that are going to be in Vegas than there will be in Phoenix for that game? Yes. We sell out. Super Bowl capacity down the strip and local uh, – Hotels is about 98%. Now, absolute. This is when there's not a, a Super Bowl in L.A. at SoFi or over in Glendale where the Arizona Cardinals play. So, yes, to answer your question, not only be people here in Vegas, you know, we, we get for the opening weekend of the NFL for March Madness. The old, you, you, oh, my God, you and your, and your father-in-law, Dave, you had a booth at Caesars Palace. For March Madness, the opening Thursday through Saturday, Sunday, Opening weekend NFL and Super Bowl is the highest capacity this town gets. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. No, that's wild. You that's you wild. you lived here. You felt look at you at March Madness. How packed oh, yeah. how packed was Caesar's Palace or all the casinos for those four days and you couldn't get a seat in those sports books? Nuts. Yeah, no. and, and and those are the first four days. You right. know, when they when they did Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, I mean, you had to get there at eight o'clock in the morning. Even though it, it, you know, it was only, uh, you know, the, the games are just about starting on on the East Coast, and literally, and you know, God rest my father-in-law Dave. I mean, I always uh, March Madness is just him. I mean, I got a story. He, he came so out. I come every, down there. He came out every single sure. year that I lived there, and we literally at eight o'clock in the morning, and we didn't get back until ten o'clock at night. And my wife would always say. My father-in-law, my father's here, and I never see him, and because you, you guys are done. I don't see him until Saturday when I can go down to, to, to the games. But it's yeah, it's it's nuts. And folks, if you're planning on doing it, I'd start planning right now. If you want to go out for March Madness, go start planning right now. Go I, ahead, I got Dave. a go great, ahead. I got a great Dave story. So mm-hmm. I go down to uh, Caesar's Palace to join them one time, and I've d- John's father-in-law is assaulted. You're rest in peace. One of the nicest people you ever met. A gentleman, a visual, young people. It looks exactly like Robert Duvall, the actor. Um, <laughs> so I go down to Caesar's Palace, and John's got his booth. And, and like I just said, his dad, his father-in-law is a gentleman, a nice person. I get down there, and he and I before I I see them, for they see me, and here's here's his dad. What the fuck? That wasn't a foul. He's going crazy because they're betting all the games. That's, he's looking at this TV and that TV. That's bullshit. Fuck this. I'm dying laughing, right? I'm dying laughing. So that's what happens when sports and, and, and betting, but it is. It is it's so much fun to come out to Vegas. I know that we're not, we're not we're doing like a, yeah. a travel show, undercover jet setter for Vegas. But when you have big of sporting events, this is the place to be to hang out. Uh, I agree. In fact, you mentioned undercover jet setter. If if you if you go to the YouTube channel for that, I I did a whole um, segment on how to do March Madness and how to do it right. Uh, so you can go take a look at that. But you know, here's what's interesting. You know, it, as oh. as much as Dave was yeah. like that, I was like that too. And so what we did was we agreed after the first year that we would bet together on the same one, and this way we could we could split the eleven dollar bet because we were so you, cheap. You, you are so full of shit. You. Because, you know, yeah, you were a celebrity at the time. Yeah, John, Dave's fucked this way. And John's like, gosh darn. Oh, <laughs> overpile. Balderdash. 
Stop with this tomfoolery. That wasn't a foul. Great. You, you couldn't put that into a script. But That's let's move cool. on, John, from you and your father-in-law. But it is great. I mean, you asked a question, will the people for the Pro Bowl? Yes. And there'll be people, tons of people in Vegas just to go to watch parties to watch the Super Bowl. Well, I'd love to see that as a prop bet. How many people are going to be in Vegas yes. compared to uh, to Glendale? All right, folks, that is the Daily Fish Hardline with John Hardison at the Cost of Winning Cost Podcast. Of winning. Again, you find him here with us, but also on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. And, uh, and again, Hardline will be back with us. Uh, stick around as we're going to get you into a little bit more controversy. But first, hey, you need a great golf getaway? The Myrtle Beach Golf Trail has dozens of golf courses along the Carolina coast. Set up an entire trip for yourself, your family, or a bunch of friends. Do it now, folks. Do it now because down here it's going to get really, really tough in the next three weeks to get some tee times. So I would say do it right now. All you got to do is go to this website. It's the it's the website is MyrtleBeachGolfTrail.com, and Jack Tatum will be with you as well. Yes. No, Lester Hayes. Oh, it's Lester Hayes. Oh, it's 37. Okay, sorry about that. Look at that. Look at those eyes. Yeah, right. perfect. All right, let's jump into a little controversy here, uh, a little politics, what's been going on. Uh, you know, sad, sad, sad week. We're going to talk about bad cops. Uh, we, we all saw the tragedy in Memphis with five cops. And just, just recently before we went on, they arrested a sixth cop today uh, being arrested for the murder of Tyree Nichols. Um, I, I guess the question is that I'll throw out there for us. What, what needs to change with the police departments? What, what do you think fish training? Um, I come across a lot of Metro officers that frequent Chuck's Tavern. 98% of them are good, but it's like life. 98% of the people you deal with are good, and you live in the fear of the 2% that are bad. It's training. It's uh, – uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a police officer, but I do know this. I can't stand the people that say defund the cops and get rid of them because what are you going to do at 2 o'clock in the morning when someone's, someone's breaking into your house? I can't stand the – and I'm a gun advocate, but there's gun advocate to say get rid of cops, take care of yourself. No, you don't want to – you know. When people are coming to rob your house or do uh, or do damage to you, that's their agenda. You're, that's not your agenda. So they're probably more uh, ready to, to, to take violence on you than you are to defend yourself. So I don't know, John. I I, I, I scrapple this and I and I and I go through this and to see that video was so disturbing to watch. Yeah. And you can't make it political. It's not a racial thing. Okay. There, it, it, it's it's case, no. we we need cops. If you don't think we need cops, what's your solution? I'm, I'm always like, we know the problem. What's the solution? I don't have one. Yeah. I, well, I think you touched on it right there. I, I, I do think longer training that includes psychological training and also testing. If you look at other countries, for instance, Norway, if you want to become a cop there, you have to train for three years. And not until the last year do you actually get to go out in the streets to actually do police work. Um, another thing I would say is better pay. Um, better pay for the cops. A lot of these guys, they're not making a lot of money. No. Um, so, you know, it, what's the incentive to, to get better? Um, and, and like you said, I, I keep telling people, stop saying defund the police. That's not what you want. You do not want to defund the police. You want to get police that are well-funded, but are also well-trained, educated, and they're there working for the community, not to cause problems in the community. I also th I say, you know, and I'm a gun advocate. I'm fine with guns, but ban the assault rifles. Sometimes these cops are outgunned. I mean, you talk to some cops sometime and they're like, hey, there's there's some stuff out there that we got to worry about. On the other hand, the state of Illinois just banned all, you know, semi-automatic guns. And the people who opposed it were the sheriff's offices in the different counties. And it's kind of like, you eh, I don't know about that. So anyway, here, here, here's a problem. I just said I deal with cops all the time and wonderful uh and 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 some of my best customers are, are ex police officers the the black market gun supply is outrageous they uh, six months ago i'm talking to a police officer and they pulled over i told you this three 16 year olds that had uzis yeah okay how now if you're a gun advocate and you're strong in the nra how you how, how you can how is a 16 year old going to pass a gun uh uh you know the, the gun I'm, I'm 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 pissed off. My dog's sitting out. My dog's out there, and it's pouring rain right now. And just, uh -oh. sometimes dogs are idiots. I love my dog, though. <laughs> um, background checks. All right, you can't pass a background check. And how are you? How do you have an Uzi? So 
So there's drug money money funneling in. It just it breaks my heart. My I I, have a, I told you this last week. We have a ton of family in Australia, and my nieces always text me or they'll, or they'll call me and go, Uncle Eric, what's going on? We don't understand why people shoot each other. Yeah. No. Sure. Would it be nice to live in a country with that war where, where that wasn't even a, a, a that wasn't even a, a talked about subject? Yeah. Yep. Nope. I agree. All right. Let's. Uh, I want to talk about another uh, topic here. Um, this is this is a galling issue to me. Holocaust deniers. Uh, and and w what's worse, th there are so many elected officials on all levels that will not believe in what happened in the late 1930s in the 1940s. I, I know this affects you, and it affects me well, uh, quite a bit yeah, as well. Well, it affects everyone. Cause I'm, 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 you know, uh, it's family members, it's it's people that I know, and I grew up in a very very diverse neighborhood of Italians and Jews. And Doug Emhoff, who's Kamala Harris, what do you call him? The second husband? How do you call that? What is that called? Uh, the he's the second. Second person, second husband or whatever. Yeah, he. I'm watching. I'm watching Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough, because I'm I'm flipping channels. And Doug Emhoff is at Auschwitz. It was Holocaust Memorial Day, uh, Remembrance Day, a couple of days ago, and he was just shocked, saying, "How many people in our Congress deny it? Don't want to talk about it? Don't care about it? These are our politicians." And I, I don't want to repeat myself. I said it last week. Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. And all these crimes, Asian crime, uh, crimes against Asians are up. Um, crimes against uh, anti-Semitism is up. Why are we going backwards, John, when we should be going forward? You are so good on bringing our viewership and our audience into, into what's going on technologically in our country and in our world to make our lives better. But our brain capacity to move forward and treat each other with respect and admiration is going south. That's this is a fuck out of me. Well, and, you know, a lot of it's education. I mean, we, we're not teaching this stuff or there's telling people not to teach this stuff. And I think also because we're getting to the point where a lot of people feel that they are not getting what they should be getting and they're going to scapegoat somebody and they're going to accuse other people. So it, it's someone of a different religion. It's someone of a different race. Um, and it's just it's easier to do. And unfortunately, you know, the, the a lot of the stuff that's happening today is stuff that was happening in the 30s and 40s. And why? Because we were coming out of a depression. Uh, there was technology that was changing and doing different things at the time. So they were able to do that. And that's that's the thing we've got to keep. It's, it's like what you said. You, you, you can't forget the past. You've got to remember what happened and, and look what it did to us. And unfortunately, it's probably... You know, we're going to run into something again, and we probably have run into certain type holocausts that have happened recently that we don't know about. I mean, people could say that what the Russians are doing to Ukraine was part of one. They're, it's a holocaust on on Ukrainian people. Sad. It's sad. Sometimes I ask you this because you're Debbie Downer in our conversations. Do you wonder sometimes how humans still walk the planet? Yeah. Yeah, at various times. On, on the other hand, I do believe that the majority of people uh, are are not that way, and it's just a small few that are gaining steam and popularity uh, that are causing problems. And it's for right. individuals who who feel that they can make money off of it, they can get fame off of it, and that's that's what's happening. I mean, that's that's what Hitler did. Just go go look at the history of of what went on in the Third Reich and what they did because. They were pissed off after World War One. World War One, they felt the Germans felt that they were mistreated by the Western Allies after that. It, and, and isn't it, it just, crazy that I was reading a, uh, an article about the after the Geneva Accords that I guess the Ger it, even as of today, present time, the Ger Germany cannot uh, uh, amass an army of more than fifty to one hundred thousand because in their past, the old Ottoman Empire, they're saying right. whenever they got a huge huge military they've attacked and it's still to that this day i don't get it i don't get it what we're gonna i mean that's something you, okay don't forget the past but i mean we need to move forward and and if, if we're gonna move forward like you said technologically and get people fed and get water to nations and get electrical grids going so we could we could not rely on fossil fuels we need to treat each other better because if we're not here to take advantage of that technology what the fuck are we doing you know 
Yeah, I agree. I, and I would, uh, you know, if anybody is visiting Germany, I'd go to the Dachau concentration camp memorial. I was there, uh, very moving, very disturbing. And, uh, you know, people got to go back and, and see this stuff. I mean, that's the only way we're going to move ahead uh, as a, as a race, as a human race, uh, to do that. So, but no, absolutely. And I think it needs to be talked about and I think it needs, you know, more of it. All right, folks, we are daily fish coming to you from Vegas and Myrtle beach. We hit sports entertainment and politics and other stuff, as you just heard. Uh, we're on Facebook at daily.fish.five. You can watch us on Facebook at Myrtle beach golf channel, Myrtle beach grants ran life. You can check out Daily Fish on YouTube. We're also on Wingding TV. We're also on Hey Vegas TV. You can go to Hey, H-E-Y, Vegas TV.com. Hey. Listen to us on Spotify, Apple, iHeart, Stitcher, and Amazon. You can use all those channels to hear our interviews with special guests. We just had Brian Cranston on uh, not long ago. Go listen to that interview. Great interview. A lot of people are talking about how great it is. And you can also see all of our different posts uh, that we put on during the week just to keep you guys updated and also drop us an email at dailyfish1 at gmail.com all right before we go fish a lot of people are are talking about this and kind of wondering and uh so trump's gearing up for a run he's already announced another run for the white house do you see him at 1600 pennsylvania avenue again as the president i just i'm so enamored with my dog how beautiful the dogs are and their dispositions and running in the <laughs> rain it's just we're talking about the end of the world and, and you got yours, and my dog is loving the rain and running around and wants you to, to – Trump, um, I, I – wow, the most polarizing guy, but he just – he just, you know, when he, when he talks to Charisma, he was talking in New Hampshire the other day, and he goes, I'm more pissed off and, and angered than I ever was. And all I think about is – if oh, okay, I go back to this, and this is almost – seems like we're doing a rerun of other shows. Where are all the goddamn indictments that everyone says were coming? Where's Merrick Garland and his indictment? Because I'm watching CNN this morning. I'm watching Jim Ciuto, Poppy Harlow. I'm watching Fox. They're all talking about Trump. And when he runs, who's going to be his running mate? Not one fucking broadcaster is talking about if he gets indicted, what's going to happen. All right? So the media has killed the narrative that this guy is going to be in jail or anything because they're, they're all moving on that he's going to have a major battle with DeSantis. So you're asking me, can I see him in 1600? Yes, because who's going to run for the Democrats? Who? I don't think Biden's running, do you? Bless you. Thank you. Um, I'm not I'm not certain. I, I don't know that Trump, I think he's got a good chance of winning the nomination, but um, um, I, I, I think some indictments are coming down in the next couple of weeks, if I had to guess. Um, Will he still run? Probably. Uh, will it hurt him? Eh, maybe. Um, right now, he is he's leading the, the pack of GOP candidates, at least according to a number of polls that I'm looking at. He's not running away with it. Um, there's also an indication that there are enough Republicans who are kind of getting tired of him, you know, especially some in Congress. Um, still, too too many of them are, you know, they're. And what I, what annoys me is that I don't mind it if somebody mocks Biden for his verbal gaffes, uh, but they seem to ignore Trump's gaffes. And um, and what's what's scary to me is there's just enough inflamed Trump followers that can cause problems whether he wins or loses. I I don't I don't think he wins again. I don't think the American people will will put him back in the White House. He's just too polarizing. And I think there's, and I talked to a lot of people that I know who were, who voted for him and said, I'm not, I'm not voting for him again. I just don't want it. And it's rare that somebody loses an election and comes back and runs again. It's very rare that you see that in American politics. And I well, just don't think it's going to happen. I, I agree with you. You got to fact check everything Donald says. And you know what? Vine's older, and if you make a gaff, I make gaffes in every show. You go and fact check me in every show, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna think that this guy's an idiot. How did he ever get any kind of education? Not as he look like a schmuck, he's letting his dog run in the rain. So, I, you know, um, no, I, 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 the one thing I'm concerned about is going forward in 2024 because we talked about this whole show on our politics side about gun issues and talking about Holocaust. This country more than ever needs one word, and that's leadership. And I think in 2024, we're going to need someone out there that's a, that's a leader 
that can bring together both all the division there is in this country. I don't think there is. Trump, I, I mean, I mean, Biden's a good guy, you know, but yeah. I, I don't know if there's anyone. I don't think there's people on the on the GOP that care about bringing people together. I don't think there's people on the left that care about bringing people together. Um, I'm concerned moving forward as a grandfather. Um, you know, we all every generation thinks about what's going to happen next. Well, how what are we doing to leave you something, a legacy? I'm worried about leadership, and I think I think most of our viewers and listeners are too. Yeah, I think you're right because we're we're so polarized, and you know, there's just you're either on one side or the other. There's very few people who are like you and me who see things from both sides. You see some good things that are there. Unfortunately, well, the majority of people are running to the extremes, so you can't see anything from them. But there are different things, and there are you're beginning to hear a couple of um, a, a couple of de uh, Republicans who are saying, you know, hey, uh, I, you know, I'm going to vote to allow some Democrats on certain committees that uh, McCarthy doesn't want. So you, I, I think you're beginning to see that, and at the same time, too, we're you know we're right in the middle of major social, technological, demographic changes, and you know, nine times out of 10, our lawmakers, they're not ahead of the game. They're behind the game. It's the businesses that are ahead of the game on, on these different things. And so it's going to take a while. And I think we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of upheaval, a, a lot of upheaval, a lot of angst and, and a lot of really pissed off people, especially over the next two to four years. I think, I think it's going to go right through the 2024 election. It, it, it's agendas. I've never seen it. You know, people say I talk too much about when I was a, a kid and what you and I lived as kids. Well, it was a great childhood. It was a great time. Yeah, we had problems. We had racism. We had the threat of communism and nuclear war. We had anger. But we had a government most of the time that John and I were younger that worked together. You know, my favorite line is Tip O'Neill said, um, I couldn't stand President Reagan. I thought it was a son of a bitch. But at the end of the day, End of the week, we'd help have a martini together and did what was right for the country. Who's going to break that? Who's going to go back to that? OK, when are we going to stop worrying about everyone's own agendas and start saying, OK, let's do what's right for the common good and common man? Maybe I should run. Can you imagine me running for president? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be right behind you. I'd be working with you. Um, I don't want I don't want I don't I, you know, what? I don't want you. You're too good looking and you don't curse. Okay. <laughs> Remember that great line from the movie Falling Down when the guy says to Robert Duvall, your father-in-law, and he says, you know, I don't like you as a cop. I don't trust you because you don't curse. You know, you got to say a fucker shit once in a while. And so you're, you're not, you're out. Here's, so, here's the, here's the problem though. There, the majority of people who are lawmakers, uh, they make way too much money through special interests and they're not going to give that up. So they're more concerned about the special interest that are paying them a lot of money. And if you go do a survey, and they've done surveys on this, go take a look. Um, anybody who's in Congress, they spend a third of their time on the phone raising money. They've got an office right outside yeah. the Capitol that they go to because you can't do it. You can't do it on government time or on government property. And they're spending a third of their time raising money for special interests to get reelected. And when they get right. reelected, what do they do? They take care of those special interests by passing. Away. John, go, go get Nike. I want, I want the audience to see what life is and it's good. Come here. Come here. Hey buddy. Hi. Want to come on in and see fish? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, see, there's Molly. That great, you... John. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with my dog with the towel, getting them dried off. That's John's dog, Nike. We're going to bring Nike on on almost every show we do because I'll, I'll say it. Nike's going through some health issues. And, yeah, God, when John lived here, Nike's about 15 years old. And we want the world to be Nike's. And, and my, my dog's name is Molly because we're big, big animal advocates here on, on, on Daily Fish. So, Nike, I got to do a shout out. Uh, I work at Chuck's Tavern. And my bosses are a father and son team named Josh and Jeremy, the biggest Eagles fans on the planet. But they're wow. not cocky. They're great Eagles fans. And they got a chance as father and son in the 2017 season to watch them win the great Nick Foles run that they yeah. had. And I'm excited for them. I'm not kissing ass from like that. Look, I'm, I'm a Raider fan, so I have no dog in the race. But um, <laughs> it makes it easy to root for those guys because they're playing the Chiefs. 
and I can't stand the Chiefs because I'm a Raider fan. So shout out to those two guys. You get to watch your team play in a Super Bowl as a father and son, and that that's and I've done that. I've that's I've been cool. able to watch the Raiders with my dad with a, win a Super Bowl, and there's nothing better than that. Yep. No, I hear you. My my years with the Pats definitely certainly enjoyed right. watching them and following them. There was a lot there, so. So, so John, good. we got a few minutes here. I, I need a 12 step program. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you in my life. I've been through anger management therapy, couples therapy. I believe in therapy. Um, you know me. I'm a huge, huge football fan. Huge. Um, I hate to say this to our audience, but I never watched another baseball, hockey or basketball game. I wouldn't lose any sleep. I loved other sports, <laughs> but I love football. And now it's down to one game. All right. I, I, I need help. I mean, I, I have a wonderful <laughs> wife. I have a grandkid. I got a son, daughter-in-law. It's great. Friends up the ass. But, I mean, that Sunday when you get up and you watch football is so cathartic for me. Yeah. Um, I know what you do. You play golf. I can't. My back's fucked, so I can't play golf anymore as much as I want to. I do work out. Um, is there any – I mean, what are you – I know you were into, like, going to great coupon societies and trying, you know, uh, you know medallions and – and, and different kind of caviar from the Caspian Sea. That's not me. Okay, so I need people to call in the Daily Fish, all right, and say, Fish, we have a new hobby for you. This is something that we think would interest you because you're not an elitist like John. I mean, look, look at John. John's holding that dog like he's uh, one of the Rothschilds, you know? He is. Mikey, today we're going to take a ride, and we're going to go down to a bistro, and we're going to try a fine wine that they think is called a rosé, but it's really a ruchelet, you know? I need help. So I'm, I'm reaching out to our audience. On that note, get us out of here. <laughs> All righty. Well, we'll find something one way or another for you, Fish. And uh, All right, buddy. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be okay. But Nike, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Yeah. Can you say goodbye to everybody? All right. Bye, Nike. All right, buddy. I, I signed us out before, so we are all set. Uh, good show. And uh, folks, we'll, we'll be back next week in between. What are we going to talk about next week? I hope it's going to be college basketball because my friars are doing really good. College basketball, it is. Talk about college basketball. We'll talk about, uh, well, the, you know, look, that, we'll, 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 we're not going to talk about the Super Bowl because you're going to get, everyone's going to get so tired of all the Super Bowl talk. Yeah. And it's yeah. Two, two weeks is a long time. We'll find something to talk about. Okay. All right. Hey, folks, thanks for joining us again.